is Tina from Shabby Dabby Too Dar. Welcome back to my channel. So we are here for another one of our mask making sessions and we are up to week number 148, would you believe? So, yep. Anyone who watches my channel, you will know that we are doing reruns. So we're week number 148, but we are rerunning week number 48. Um, I can't believe that we are... <laughs> you know this far through and we've done this many of them I know it's every week but honestly it's just flabbergasting so this week we are rerunning um paper tabs so little tabs to use on your tags on your um you know pockets and things on the sides of pages you know anywhere really that yeah that you could put a tab um and we're just making them from paper so I'm just going to kind of run through what you're going to need if you're wanting to do a bit of a craft along so I have brought along mainly printables because, of course, that's what I've got mainly in my stash these days. You don't have to bring printables along. You could use um, scrapbook paper. You could use, um, you know, just plain card. You could use plain coffee, oops, plain coffee dyed paper. I will probably do some on that myself. Um, you know, anything at all that you want to use. You could probably use um, like coffee dyed paper that you've perhaps stamped on. Anything at all, really. The only thing that I would say is... I personally would find it needs to be a bit thicker. So all of the paper that I've got, I mean, this is very thick, actually. This is 250 GSM, but it's all a minimum of um, 160, I think, except for this one, which is some fly sheet from a book. But it still is, you know, hopefully you can kind of hear that. It's not like a really flimsy, thin book page. So that's my only thing that I would kind of mention is, you know, I wouldn't use anything too flimsy because, you know, obviously they're just going to then be very vulnerable and kind of prone to getting, you know, bent and squished and squashed and, you know, they're just not going to be robust. Um, so that's what you're going to need. Now, I am also going to use, I've got an oval punch here. I think this is a three inch. I can't see anything saying three inch. I'm pretty sure it was three inch. It's a scalloped oval punch. Um, that's what I'm going to use for some of them. I'm going to use, got a tiny oval punch, which this is, hopefully you can see that, is two and a half centimetres by 1.9 centimetres. Now, you don't have to use an oval punch. I know lots, you know, lots of you maybe don't have an oval punch, but if you've got a circle punch, that would work just as well. Um, because basically this is going to be to create the little kind of notches in your um, tabs so either a circle or an oval either is fine I might try some out with just a plain oval rather than the scalloped shape and again this is a three inch punch you do not have to have an oval punch you could obviously draw around something to make an oval or you don't have to do oval ones at all because a lot of the ones that I'm going to do they're just going to be cut with scissors just rectangular so please don't think that if you don't have an oval punch that you're not going to be able to do these and the same as if you don't have even a circle punch or an oval punch for doing your little notches, again, you don't have to have that. You could always just cut them by hand. I'm just going to be using these because then I'm guaranteed they're going to be kind of similar size. Um, you know, whereas obviously if I cut them by hand, they're, you know, chances are they're not going to be very well matched. But that's because I'm not a very precise person and not very good at doing things with precision. So that's all I think we're going to need. Do you know, I don't even think we're going to really need glue. The only part that you might need glue for, oh, and you're going to need scissors, sorry. The only, the only bit that you might need glue for is um, if you want to decorate up any of your tabs when you've done, um, then you may need some glue. Aside from that, I don't think really you're even going to need glue. You may want to have a bone folder for squishing them down, but again, not essential. You can use your scissor handles. So that's all there is to it. And these are very, very quick and easy to make. So, I mean, touch wood, we're going to make a ton of these, um, you know, which is going to be awesome. Now, I have to say, I have got rid of a lot of scraps recently. Um, so if this seems very, very wasteful, you know, I do apologise. It's just that, you know, I've actually whittled my scraps down and I sent a lot out and got rid of a lot of scraps when I did my craft organisation, you know, my new room. Um, so, yeah, mine are mainly whole new sheets um, that I'm going to be using. But anyway, you can definitely do this with scraps. So let's take the first one and just get kind of doing a couple. And we'll do a couple of different ones. So we'll do one that's just cut down with scissors. We'll do one with like the oval punch. We'll do one with the scalloped oval punch. And then we can kind of get a feel for what we like best. So for the oval one, 
let's take this with the flowers. So this is from my um, birdhouse terrace, I think the uh, papers are called. For some reason, I can never remember the name of this particular kit, but I think these are my birdhouse terrace background papers. So just cut your little rectangle down and then you're just going to fold it in half. Now, many of you may have obviously seen the first round of the um, mass make of these. So, you know, that, that really is all there is to them. And then you're going to take your circle or your um, oval. Now, for some reason, my circle punch, this has kind of gone, well, perhaps it was always skew if, but yeah, it's a bit sort of disconcerting. So, you know, like inside where it has the markings, like that. Now, if yours, like mine, is a little bit off centre, what you could do to make sure you get them in the right place every time is put it into where you find, you know, is a nice position and then just draw here on the very edges just with a permanent marker so as you know your page needs to go in or your tab needs to go into that point. I'm going to just use my oval because that's got the metal marks and they're actually in the middle so I'm just going to take that in kind of roughly lined up with the middle there and then turn it over and do exactly the same obviously for the other side like that and then you've just got a perfect little tab now when I first started making these I did round the corners um I think that's still you know an option I have to say lately when I've made them I've not bothered rounding the corners so let's do another one with the corners rounded and then we can kind of see which we prefer so if I just take another rectangle, again, fold it in half like that, okay? I mean, they don't even have to be lined up perfectly at the bottom because when you put them on something, they're going to be, do you see what I mean, hooked around the paper. So if they're not kind of even like exactly perfect on the bottom, you're not going to see that once they're actually, you know, hooked on. So then again, put it into the punch one and then turn it over like that and then take your corner rounder now obviously this is slightly tricky because you know they're quite tiny but fiddliness aside put them into your corner rounder and just round off your corners like that so again let's just show you against here where you can kind of see. So that's the one with the rounded corners. And this is the one with the non-rounded corners. So, I mean, to be honest, I think they both look fine. Um, yeah, I don't really know which one I have a lean in towards. Um, I think either, either are absolutely fine. So that's those. Now let's do one where we chop out the, cor the corners, um, you know, like manually by hand. And this is where, of course, I'm not going to make a very good job of this because, like I say, I'm not very, very good with precision or anything. But we take our rectangle. I mean, to be honest, I'm not even squishing it down with the, my scissor handles. I'm just pressing it, pressing it down with my nails. Now, because I'm rubbish, I'm not even going to kind of draw around that. Probably to get the best result, you'd kind of draw around that maybe with some pencil, cut to that mark, and then flip it over and do the other side. I'm not going to do that, I'm going to just wing it. So just going to take that down like that, okay? And then I'll show you what I meant. So flip it over and put that on the other side. Oops, and that's just given you a guide for where you want to cut the other notch. So like that. Oh my goodness, what a shocking job I made of that. That looks so awful. Right, okay, so that's why, for me, this method isn't great. Of course, it would have been better had I actually marked it out with um, a pencil. I probably could have, could have managed to make a decent job of it. But anyway, it's fine. So if I just show you how that looks, that's how that would look on, you know, on a tag or whatever so I mean although I've made a rubbish job of it it still does look okay you know I mean I don't think it looks too too terrible I would still perhaps use it um so that's those right let's do one with the oval punch so I'm going to do the scalloped oval punch first 
So again, just going to put this onto the page like that. Punch out your oval. And then ex exactly the same, you're just going to fold your oval in half like that. And, you know, just the same. I've not even squished it down with my scissors or anything. I've just done it with my nails. And then get your oval punch or your circle punch or, you know, whatever it is that you're using to do your, your notches on the corners. Now, you may want to go in slightly further. You know, if this is kind of like a bigger, bigger size for you. So I'm just taking it up slightly more and over slightly more. And then, again, put that back in. Oops. Oh, it's annoying because it's obviously not quite flat enough to want to go in there easily. Right, there we go. So I've just moved it up slightly and over slightly like that. And that's your little tab. So again, let me just show you how that looks on the paper. Oops. Like that. And like that. So, I mean, it's just a completely different kind of look, isn't it? And, you know, just really quite sweet. So that's that one. Now, I have to be honest, I have never tried one with the um, plain oval. I've only ever tried one with the scallop. So this might look absolutely shocking. But I'm thinking it, you know, it might look quite nice. So let's give it a try. So just punch my oval out. Fold your oval in half. Like that. And then take your, you know, your circle or your oval to make your notches. Again, I've put it slightly higher because these are, you know, these are quite big, aren't they? So like that and like that. This might be a little bit too, too big. I mean, you can probably see it's hanging down quite a fair way, isn't it? So, you know, that might be a little bit too big. I mean, you could always go in and trim it if you thought it was a bit on the big side. I have, however, got a slightly smaller oval. Let me just pull that in. So I've got here, this is a two inch oval. I'm thinking this was probably going to be too small, but let's give it a try. Okay. And then just fold that over. Push that down like that. And then obviously I don't need to put it so high this time because this is that much smaller. Do my corners one. Oops. And then the other one. Like that. There we go. I have to be honest, this is probably a little bit too small. So, you know, I've got one extreme to the other. One is a bit too big, one is a bit too small. Um, but hopefully you can kind of see how that looks. And to be honest, you know, you want to probably have a big variety of sizes for these. Because, you know, when you make things, you obviously make them in all different sizes. So, you know, whilst I kind of think, oh, this is perhaps a little bit on the small side, it might be quite handy to have some in all different sizes. So that is that. So yeah, that's really all there is to these. So I'm just going to literally punch these out. What I'll probably do is cut my shapes and punch my shapes first, then do all the folding and then do all the notches. Um, and then we'll just kind of maybe decorate one up and, you know, make it look pretty. Um, yeah, and I'm sure that before we know it, we're going to have tons and tons of these because obviously in just the 15 minutes that I've been filming, I've already got three four, five, six, six of them done. So they really are a kind of no time at all um, project. And, you know, no time at all, but really, really nice to have on hand and really, really convenient to have a bunch of these done. So I'm just going to pull in some different paper so it's not really boring. Um, and I've, yeah, going to do some in different papers. Now, the only other thing that I will mention is I have got some of my little invoice papers, which... I printed on two, oops, hang on, that's a scrap, so that's quite a good one, but I printed on to um, this, which is nine, you know, nine to a sheet, and this was just in a printer setting where you pick what size you want to print your stuff to, and I thought these would be really lovely as paper tabs because they obviously are the complete, um, you know, pages, 
but in small size. So, I mean, I think they're really, really nice. Hopefully they're going to look good, um, you know, used as, as little tabs. I'm just going to check with my, with my holes now to see what I can get from these. So, I mean, that um, scalloped oval punch would just fit perfectly on these as would obviously the you know the plain one so yeah just wanted to kind of check that out so let's just get um making some so like i said i'm just going to cut them down and punch them out and then we can just relax have a nice time and be like super productive making a whole bunch of these um you know in kind of uh, the normal kind of assembly line style where we do each stage all you know all together so yeah, hope everyone's having a good start to their week. I am filming this ahead because obviously I'm going to be on holiday. So um, I would normally have filmed this obviously on the Monday morning, ready to go up on the Tuesday, but I've, I'm filming it ahead. So yeah, nothing new to report in my world, I'm afraid, because I'm filming this the same week that I've actually had to film. Um, this is my third one filming this week. So definitely definitely nothing nothing to talk about nothing to report in my life so uh, yeah unfortunately there we go oh well I suppose the most exciting thing that's happened is um my daughter oh we were doing her hair and I know I've talked about this loads of times this endless saga with her hair was just oh just like a nightmare um, but yeah, we were doing her hair and she, she was saying, no, oh, you know, I wish I had short hair, mum, please, you know, can we cut my hair short? Can we cut my hair short? Oh, so I took the scissors to her hair. Now her hair is curly and I've talked about this a lot. And so when she obviously has it washed, it's really long. I mean, it's down to her waist. When it's dry, I mean, it gradually pings up more and more every single day. So, I mean, after like a week or whatever, uh, I was going to say it looks shoulder length. It doesn't look shoulder length. It obviously, it does still look longer than that. But it really does ping up a lot. You know, it's quite shocking how much it does ping up. So, um, yeah, she's she's obviously, you know, fed up with it. Because all we ever do is just put it into plaits. And then we just leave it in the plaits for the whole week. Because I don't dare touch it again. You know, and she certainly won't let me touch it again. So, um, I mean, sometimes it stays in plaits for two weeks. So, you know, because she just will not, you know, she won't let you wash it when she's in the shower. She won't let you brush it, you know, full stop. So, yeah, sometimes it just stays in those same plaits. Um, you know, so, I mean, obviously it looks very messy by the end of the two weeks. Um, so, yeah, she kept saying, oh, please, can we cut my hair? Can we cut my hair? So, oh, my goodness, what shall I do? So, I thought, well let's just cut it what's the worst that can happen I mean it will grow again you know and actually do you know what maybe it will be better because maybe she'll be able to kind of wear it up because that's what she kept saying you know she was sick of wearing it in the same style i.e just two plaits every day and you know she wanted to be able to wear it in a ponytail and things like that you know like all of her friends do I suppose so yep oh I finally reluctantly agreed to cutting it so I cut it, um, I cut it a little bit while it was wet and I cut it a little bit while it was dry. This is my pink posies um, background papers. So yeah, just going to cut a strip for rectangular ones. Um, yeah, so a bit when it was wet and a bit when it was dry. It looks okay. I mean, I have to say, you know, it looks okay. I mean, obviously not if anybody knew what they were doing. They would think, what a shocking mess you've made of her hair. But, you know, because it's very curly, it's actually really forgiving because you know, a lot of it is kind of disguised. You know, you can't really tell. It's not like straight hair where if it was completely wonky, it would be really, you know, evident to everybody. It's, it's not like that. It's, um, you know, it is kind of by nature all over the place so you know you can't really kind of tell and it yeah it looks okay I mean the only thing is of course as we've done it it's obviously kind of like just gone wider and wider now it's kind of bushed out so she could do with kind of having maybe some layers and things like that put in it I did of course YouTube um you know how to cut that kind of hair and <laughs> I, I mean loads of people had um these 
ways of doing it where they kind of then separated out and pulled the top bit forward in almost like a ponytail with it hanging over their face. And then they put a band on it and cut like the, the ponytail basically. Um, you know, and that's how they would put in like layers and um, not texture. Well, I suppose texture, you know, to, so it's not just got that really wide um, splaying out kind of appearance. So who knows, we might kind of revisit it and do a bit of that later. Um, but I mean, at the moment, she's just thrilled to bits to be able to be wearing it in a ponytail. So, oh, fingers crossed it will be okay. But yeah, I mean, it's it's not the best, not the best haircut, it have got to be said, but you know, it's all right. And she likes it. So that's the main thing. Um, and then I also bought a new brush for her, which... I'd seen on a YouTube and um, I think it was called a wet, a wet hairbrush, a wet hairbrush or something like that. Um, you know, it says that when you actually wash your hair, you can kind of use the brush in the shower, which, you know, I mean, at times we have tried to brush her hair, obviously when it's wet in the shower. Oh my goodness, what a nightmare. So I'm hoping that this brush is going to be like the answer to all of our prayers. This is the, um, I think it's the Melrose Garden papers. Um, yeah, I'm hoping it's going to be the answer to all of our prayers, but who knows? It will uh, remain to be seen. But anyway, she's she's thrilled because she can be wearing it in a ponytail, and you know that's that's the main thing, isn't it? You know that she likes it. So yeah, who am I? Who am I to argue? To be honest. I mean, it is boring. I can see why she's obviously bored of having just two plaits every day. Of course, that would be boring, you know. Um, but, yeah. And then I've been madly packing our stuff for our holiday. So, I mean, obviously, you know, as I'm filming this, I probably will be on holiday. Uh, as this is going up, sorry, I will be on holiday. But, um, you know, as I'm filming it, obviously, I'm not yet on holiday. Um, so, yeah, I've been madly packing and you know we're obviously we've been renting our or we're going to be renting our house out so i have been madly cleaning and so's my middle son he's just been a superstar and really 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 helped with the cleaning so um yeah i mean he i know i've talked about him before he loves cleaning he finds it you know very satisfying and he does a really good job so um much better job than i do i'm rubbish at cleaning I don't take any pleasure from it so you know it's done in that slapdash way of oh my goodness let's just get this done as quick as possible whereas he actually takes probably a bit more pride in his work and um yeah it kind of shows because he obviously has much better results and you know looks much better than it does when I do it but yeah <laughs> so that's what we've been busy doing and um yeah kind of got quite a few bits left to do can't wait to have it all just done and dusted so I think I did say but you know at first we're going to be staying with my mum and dad um you know because our holiday isn't you know isn't when the guests arrive if you see what I mean so there's an overlap so um yeah we're gonna go and stay with my mum and dad um for a few days so we also are you know quickly packing our things to go there because obviously we need to pack up our holiday things our things for while we're at my mum and dad's and then also our um you know clear our wardrobes but sort of have them just put in the sort of garage space really in the house so yeah it's been um it's been quite a lot of work but hey it's it's been okay I mean we did say wow this is a bit of a bit of an eye-opener for how much we really need to kind of you know, whittle our stuff down so that our wardrobes and things, they're not quite so, quite so full. Because obviously, if we had less stuff, you know, it wouldn't be such a mammoth task. So, yeah, going forward, I'm hoping that we're going to, you know, use this as a bit of a, we must now keep on top of our mess, you know. I mean, like I said about the oven, <laughs> hopefully this will be like a stark reminder of like, do not let your oven get so dirty in the first place, you know. But, oh, I mean, generally, I just think, who cleans their oven? I mean, mine really only gets cleaned when we move house normally. So, well, I mean, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but not much, it's got to be said. I do, 
do generally only clean it when you know when I absolutely have to kind of you know you reach the point where it's like <gasps> got no choice but to clean the oven so uh, yeah um, so sorry that paper there that was my um, Victorian uh, either springtime or gallery I can't remember which I'm afraid and this is the prairie papers in the green and these are the um, Victorian ladies background papers so yeah anyway that's kind of what we've been busy doing um, <laughs> my daughter's passport at this point still has not arrived would you believe I mean I can't tell you I feel so sick but I did, however, this morning receive a message, you know, text message, first thing this morning saying her passport has been dispatched and it should arrive today. Oh my goodness, I felt so relieved. I have felt so sick, so sick, <laughs> worrying that her passport was not going to be here in time. So I'm just praying and praying that now it definitely is going to arrive today. I mean, to be honest, I won't be quite happy until it's actually here in our house. At the moment, I'm still kind of like, oh my goodness, is it going to get here? I just pray it does. But yeah. And thank you so much to all those lovely people who kind of, you know, messaged and things, hoping that it arrives. So really appreciate your keeping your fingers crossed for us as well. And a few people did say about the fast track service. And um, yeah, they do have a fast track service, but they no longer let you do that for children. Um, I think, you know, look, like because you hear sometimes about um you know children who are kind of kidnapped by one of the parents in a sort of custody battle i think they've clamped down on it because of that um right i'm just going to now start folding these so i'll fold them all and then we'll do the little notches i think with them all so yeah anyway so you can't do the fast track service unfortunately for children so otherwise of course i would have done the you know the fast track and um yeah i mean obviously <laughs> on the occasion where I did manage to get through to them on the phone, I said, well, can I not bump this up to a fast track now? Because, you know, I've applied in the normal way, but, you know, it's not kind of getting here um, in time. Can I now, you know, escalate it up? No, you weren't allowed to do that. So, um, yeah, it just, it is what it is. But like I say, touch wood, I've received the message today saying her passport is, you know, is dispatched and hopefully is going to be here today so oh I will be so 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 relieved when it gets here because my goodness it's just oh causes me such a lot of stress and maybe they do that so that you know when you go on holiday you're even more pleased to be on holiday than you would have been otherwise because you're like really 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 needing your holiday by now I don't know but I could have done without it to be honest if that was their ploy to make me appreciate my holiday, honestly, I could have could have appreciated it fine without this, um, you know, without this stress, wondering whether it was going to arrive. So, yeah. So obviously with the packing, oh my goodness, what a nightmare. I'm just like, what shall I pack? Like craft wise, wise I know. I mean, how ridiculous, like, why is that? Why is that a priority for me? But but of course it is because I don't want to be on holiday without any craft things. So I have packed a bag for crafting and um, I probably need to pack like a separate bag for crafting to take to my mum's house because um, these ones actually, I'm going to cut these down a bit. Um, yeah, I could probably do with, um, you know, having a separate craft bag for my mum's and a separate one for the actual holiday. So, I think that's probably a bit wide actually, that one. Um, yeah, probably should do that, but we'll see. I'm still kind of in the throes of packing. So at the moment, just, you know, kind of thinking, oh, what's the best way? What's the best way to pack? But yeah, thinking about it really, I probably could have two craft bags, kind of like one for the, time at my mum's and one to take on holiday honestly I dread to think how long it's going to take us to actually unpack all of our stuff when we get back it's going to be a nightmare hmm. but I was talking to my friend who's done quite a lot of cruises and they suggested you know that you can get washing done um, like a bag of washing and my mum and dad who've also done quite a few cruises my mum said well they do have washing machines um, so <laughs> I don't really want to be doing that 
I might do a bit of washing while we're on the boat because um, it will just save some of the, you know, some of that rubbish when you get home and then it's like, oh my goodness, I'm going to be washing for England like for the next week. So yeah, I might, might do that. We shall see. I mean, the thing is, they've probably got a tumble dryer, I'm guessing, to kind of dry it all. But, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I just find most clothes can't really be tumble dried. You know, I don't mind putting the children's things in, got to be said. <laughs> because, obviously, I mean, like the boys, most of their clothes, they're either, um, you know, tracksuity type things where they go to the gym. Or else their jeans, you know, which, of course, can be thrown in the tumble dryer. They are a lot of kind of T-shirty things or sweatshirty things, you know. So they're pretty much tumble dryable. Same with my daughter, really. Most of her stuff is tumble dryable. I mean, certainly like her school uniform and things like that. I've got to be honest, most of my stuff I don't think is tumble dryable. Um, you know, I wear dresses and things mainly rather than jeans. And um, yeah, I actually don't think most of it is tumble dryable. So, you know, I don't really want to put things in the tumble dryer and then end up where I have shrunk it, you know. <laughs> shrunk it and ruined it completely so I'm not sure I'll have to just check out the situation really check out the labels you know while I'm on there I mean even if I just did the children's and bought my own stuff back then you know it's not going to be so bad I mean of course you know I wouldn't normally make such a fuss it's only because obviously where we're going to have had our guests in our house as well you know we're going to get in and obviously have all the washing of like the bedding and the towels and all that from them as well so I just think, oh, this is going to be quite a lot of work when we get back. So if I could try and eliminate some of the work by having washed some of our clothes first, that might just be, you know, a good call, mightn't it? So, you know, otherwise I can just picture that washing all just lingering around for like a couple of weeks by the time I'm actually kind of on top of it again. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, obviously it will help if when we get back, if the weather's still nice, because it's been gorgeous this week absolutely gorgeous um because then of course at least i'd be able to put it out in the garden i mean obviously it's slightly more problematic when you've got to have your washing all strewn around the house you know um because of course then it doesn't really dry for ages and then it's just just all there looking an eyesore you know i mean i've constantly got washing all over in my kitchen constantly right okay so i folded them all over so i'm just going to now do my little notches now Like that. Okay. There we go. But yeah, anyway, so, you know, moaning aside, really looking forward to the holiday and, you know, yeah, just going to be good. Going to be good. There we go. And then I can't believe it. When we get back, my daughter then has only got two weeks left at school and then she'll be finished for the holidays anyway. Honestly, I mean, it's like one big holiday for her. <laughs> so my son, obviously, he'll have finished his GCSEs. You know, he finishes them the week before we go. So he will have kind of technically left school already. And actually, I mean, you know, left school. Um, of course, he's hoping to go back to do A-levels. But yeah, I mean, he will have, will have left school at that point. So... Um, yeah, it's going to be kind of like weird, very weird, you know, because when we get back from holiday, I mean, he's never going to be going back to school until September when he goes back to do his A-levels. So he's hoping to stay on at school to do his A-levels. We did go and look at some colleges and things. Um, but I think, you know, most of his friends who are doing A-levels are doing them at school. So, I mean, that's nice, obviously, to be with your friends. Um, and actually, we're really lucky because the school that they go to it's got a really good reputation and it's, you know, got a really good name for the A-levels. So, um, you know, I think they're actually a really good provider for A-levels. So, yeah, he's hoping to stay on and do them at school, which is brilliant because, of course, it's local. He can walk there. You know, he obviously knows people there. He's got a relationship already with the teachers and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, it's kind of good, really. You know, and we're very lucky, obviously, that the school has, you know, has got a good reputation for the A-levels because, um, you know, I know, obviously, it's a bit of a struggle otherwise. You know, some people maybe would have to travel a long way to find a college or a school or something that maybe is, is good. So, yeah, we're very, very lucky. 
I have to say, I'm quite surprised that he actually wants to stay and do A-levels at all. Um, yeah, I mean, he's never kind of like, well, never seemed to have liked school that much. But yeah, I think it's because he really wants to do Spanish. He absolutely loves it. And he, he took Spanish as one of his options, you know, and, um, you know, for his GCSEs. And he just absolutely loves it. I mean, I am, you know, well, just terrible. I can't speak any foreign language at all. Of course, at school we did French, but I never mastered the art, unfortunately, because, you know, I would love to be able to speak French, especially because, you know, I just love France so much. It's such a beautiful country. I mean, I would love to live there. So, you know, and of course, I would hate to live somewhere where I couldn't speak the language. So that would be a barrier, <laughs> a barrier for me. But yeah, so, you know, really kind of like can't believe that he's so proficient in his um, speaking Spanish, to be honest. But yeah, he's he's got quite a quite a good grasp of it. And his accent is really good, you know, kind of because it, it's not just about saying the words, is it? But I mean, you've got to be able to use the accent correctly and kind of, you know, yeah, put the accent on kind of thing. And he really is good and really can seem to do that. So, yeah, he's very, um, yeah, very keen on the subject and, you know, kind of has dedicated himself. I mean, actually, I think he's even put all of his phone now in Spanish. I mean, yeah, what on earth? So I, I don't know whether the text messages come up in Spanish. I'm not sure whether, I don't know. I don't know really what is Spanish and what's English but you have an option to put it in to another language and yeah he's put his in Spanish and he did that several months ago so I don't think he's changed it back he must be still getting on okay with it so um yeah I must ask him actually if he has still got it in Spanish because perhaps he's changed it back by now but yeah that's how dedicated he's he is to kind of you know learning Spanish he's he's even got his phone now in Spanish I mean, he asked me to look at something on his phone and I said, I, I don't know what I'm doing now. I can't find anything because it's in Spanish. I can't remember even what it was that I was doing, but, you know, it was just, it threw me, it threw me completely. And I don't know what happens, you know, if he types. Well, I assume he types in English and then I don't know whether it would translate it into Spanish for the written version. I don't know. No idea. I must ask him a bit more, but... I mean, it's so clever, isn't it, what phones and te technology can do now, you know. When I think back to kind of years ago, I mean, it's just flabbergasting how fast the changes have occurred, really, you know, technology-wise. And, of course, the technology has then driven everything else, hasn't it? And, um, you know, it's kind of almost not recognisable to when we were children, you know, and... Um, I'm really really old now but I just think it is shocking and kids can't really kind of appreciate the changes that have happened I think you know um because of course they've always been surrounded by technology and what have you it's it's just amazing I mean a bit like when we're on holiday I think I said before but I'm going to try and um you know, like purchase internet usage from the uh, boat, which I haven't done yet. I must organise that as well. Um, but yeah, so, so that I can obviously stay in touch with you all and, you know, um, reply to comments and things like that. And, uh, you know, isn't that incredible that you can literally be on a boat in the middle of the ocean and, you know, still be contactable, you know, via well via everything I mean via the internet is you know you can then FaceTime people you can you know surf the net you can watch YouTube you can you know do everything I mean that just seems incredible to me that technology has just evolved to such a level it's just amazing amazing and you know I think we're so privileged to be able to have such things you know such resources really Right, okay. I'm going to leave those last few because, let me check the time. Oh, we might be okay. I felt like I'd been punching for ages and I thought, well, this must be so boring to be watching. 
but we might be okay time wise so Okie dokie, oops, come on. Okay. Yeah, it's been such lovely weather here. I mean, again, you know, filming ahead, so, and I always put that out, but just like a disclaimer, really, because if the weather is shockingly bad now, I don't want people thinking, well, what's she talking about? Yes, at this point, the weather has been lovely this week, but I have to say about time really, because you know, it has not been very good, particularly this year so far. So yeah, I'm hoping that summer's actually started now because you know, it's been a long time coming. So yeah, could do with some, some sunshine and some nice weather really. Hopefully, you know, hopefully we're going to have nice weather when we're away, but equally, hopefully you, you guys are going to have nice weather if you live in the UK and, you're not going away and you know when we come back hopefully we're going to come back for more nice weather you know because uh it just makes you feel so much better doesn't it when the sun's shining and you know you can get outside it's it just makes you feel so much better doesn't it so these are the tabs that we have done now let's just qu quickly do a count of how many we've done one two three four oops five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, oh, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 40 i mean obviously i did kind of glance at the um you know the video to just double check what i was doing and yeah i didn't go as far as to see how many i made which is a shame because actually now i wish that i did know how many i've made but yeah i mean i didn't get that far right let's decorate one or two of these up so just having a look to see see if i've got a sort of blue bluish toned one no, of course I haven't. And that might be too big to go on there anyway, but let's just have a look. So these are just my vintage circles and let's just do... Oh, so sorry, I just knocked something flying when I picked up my punch there. Right, let's take this pink chair. Okay. Take the chair and is that too big? Hmm, it just look a bit big, isn't it? Oh, what a shame. I also have got smaller circles, they're in the same um printable, but I haven't got any printed out, unfortunately. Um, you know, which really is a shame because that would be ideal. Well, should we just try and see see if we can make the best of this one? I'm just going to ink around there like that now. Hmm, I mean, that's quite pretty, actually. I quite like it like that. So let's just ink that around there. Okay. Right, let's just get a bit of lace. Oh, I'm just swamping it completely, aren't I there? So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure about the lace now. Right, let me just glue this very gently onto the lace. So, like, hardly at all, but, yeah, just enough to hold the lace in place. So, like that. And then let's just cut this out. Just so there's, like, a really tiny sort of bit. Oh, that looks pretty, doesn't it? So, yeah, let's just then glue this down. Okay. Like that. Okay. 
Oops, it's all stuck all over me. Sorry about this. <laughs> ah, sorry. I'm just trying to get those glue threads off. So that's that tab. Right, just be careful because obviously I've got that hot glue now everywhere. But I mean, how pretty is that? I mean, literally, that's just that vintage circle. It's, you know, it's got nothing else even on there except for the lace and the circle. But just looks so gorgeous, doesn't it? Now, I'm just wondering whether we could could finish it off with a butterfly. The butterfly might swamp it, but let's just see. Because, I mean, obviously, the tabs, they're only quite tiny. So, I mean, you're going to have a limit to, you know, how much decorating you can really do on a tab. But, but hey, if we can deco decorate it, then we will. So, no matter how tiny it is, let's... Let's see if we can get something on there. Just get something on there looking good. Okay. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Yeah. Although that is quite big, um, it does look pretty. So this butterfly is just from the background paper of those pink lady papers. So I just took it from that. How gorgeous does that look? So I'm just going to pull in some plain paper just to kind of show you. So if that, you know, if this were a tag, for example, and then your tab would just go on the top like that. How gorgeous is that? It just looks so pretty, doesn't it? Just love how that looks. Um, should we do one more? Let me just see what the time is. I think we've got time for one more who knows how we're going to decorate it because like i say i mean actually it is very tricky because they're so small you know you really are very kind of restricted as to you know what you can then put on them but let's have a little look and see so wondering whether i could well let's do a pink one shall we because we did do quite a few pinks um... Hmm, maybe not any of those. Um, let's have a look here. Oh, we've got some stamped bits here. Let's just have a look. Actually, be before I use those, I've got some other stamped bits here on vellum. So let's just see. Got this vellum butterfly. Just thought, oh, this might look quite pretty because it's very delicate, although actually quite black on there isn't it oh maybe not that piece um hmm. Hmm. i don't know why i think it might look better on this than it did in the vellum i have no idea why Yeah, that is quite pretty. I don't know why I always have to put things to the right. It's, it's just a thing that I, I seem to do. Automatically, everything just goes on the right-hand side. So I've got a little tiny label here, which I'm thinking might just be okay. And these are just from my labels. I think it's the label set two um, printables. So Again, I mean, I'm just grabbing things that are laying around on my desk from other projects. So... Okay. Actually, the other thing that would look very pretty on these are the bows. They would look very cute on these. So I'm just thinking, you know, maybe have the label and then... Yeah, that looks nice, doesn't it? Just check which side I want it. That side or that side. Oh, we'll have it on this side, I think. So, um, yeah, should we ink this a little bit? Oh, no. I'm so sorry. Hold on. Sorry about that. It was just another one of those nuisance phone calls that you get. Honestly, I mean, they're never anything interesting or that, you know, you want to take. But yeah, sorry about that. So I'll just put this one down on here. I'm just going to use wet glue rather than the hot glue. 
So let me just pop this one down. Oops. Sorry, just need to unclog my glue now. So mm, nearly poked myself with the uh, pin then. Just pop that on there just to the side and then I'm just going to put that butterfly to the side of there. I'll use my hot glue for this just because it's quick and easy. No more messing about with the pin. Okay, so that's that. Let's just now have a look and see how that would look on a tag. So if that was just up there, that's how that would look. How pretty does that look? It's so cute, isn't it? And like I say, I mean, I'm just reaching for stuff that's laying around on my desk. I'm not, you know, I've not pulled in anything special or anything like that. Um, but just reached in for things that were laying around. But it looks so cute, doesn't it? So, yeah, I mean, I hope that you like them. Obviously, if you caught them first time round, you know, I hope it was useful, the rerun. And, um, you know, maybe like me, you'd kind of begin to, or been beginning to run out. And, you know, it was a good opportunity to just replenish your, your stocks of them. But they're a super quick and easy one and definitely they are something that you could do when you're watching TV and things like that. Um, you know, because they're very silent, you're not really going to be kind of affecting people. I mean, maybe the punch, but yeah, I mean, even that, you can kind of be quietish doing, can't you? So um, yeah, I hope that you like them and I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a fab week, everyone, and have a fab day. I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.